In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Hello Comet Chasers, it's February, so Greg, what comets do we have awaiting us this month? Well, alas, it's been a bit of a different month. In the time since we started this channel together in the fall of 2023, we've had the most remarkable run of bright comets in my memory. The only time that comes close is the 1990s, when we had both the very memorable Hale-Bopp and Yakutake within a few months of each other. I've been maintaining the Comet Chasing webpage for so long, I've lost track of when I started it, but I think it goes back almost 20 years now. Certainly in that time, there haven't been so many bright and interesting comets coming one right after another, like we've had over the last 18 months or so. So what's causing this sudden increase in comets? Should we be worried about a comet storm or something? No, it's just a random chance. None of these comets have been related in any way. If things are dead again next month, we may do a retrospective because it's been an extraordinary time. So what about this month? We currently have a bright, even naked eye comet, but it's only available to those in the Southern Hemisphere. And I have no idea how long it's going to last because it's technically disintegrated. The next brightest comet requires an 8-inch telescope to see, and although chasing comets in the telescope is a big part of what this channel is all about, it's not, as we say, well-placed for observation. Last month's video came just as our current bright comet, C2024 G3 Atlas, was arriving on the scene. A lot has happened since then, and there have been some really amazing photos. So I thought we'd talk about the extraordinary events of the last few weeks and end with some predictions for February. Greg, why are you grinning like that? Someone commented that I'm an AI again, which I think is really funny. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess that's just the times we live in. Right. Comet 2024 G3 Atlas was discovered on April 5th, 2024, by the Atlas Survey Telescope in Chile. A couple of weeks later, I asked the knowledgeable people on the comet group what they thought of it. Right away, it was pointed out that its absolute magnitude might be below the so-called Bortle survival limit. This is a rule of thumb that gives us an idea of whether or not a comet is going to survive its pass near the sun. My neighbor, Alan Hale, yes, that Alan Hale, suggested that it is likely too intrinsically faint, but felt it would be interesting to follow its development. Others reminded that it was way too early to be making predictions. It was also suggested that perhaps it would be best observed with NASA's SOHO satellite, which monitors the vicinity of the sun. As the new year approached and the comet closed on the sun, people started wondering if it might be glimpsed in daylight, especially by those in the Northern Hemisphere, because that might be preferable to trying to spot it very low on the horizon. A lot of people in the comet community expected it to break apart prior to perihelion, that's the closest approach to the sun, and the expectation of most was that it would disappear soon afterward. So what actually happened? In early January, it increased in brightness unexpectedly. That put people on alert for a fragmentation event but it initially proceeded pretty much as we expected. Some people reported seeing it very low in the pre-dawn sky. It had also developed an interesting bright streak at the center of its tail. Astronaut Don Pettit posted this image from the International Space Station on January 11th, just days before closest approach to the sun on the 13th. He had a pretty good view from up there. It ventured into the SOHO satellite coronagraph field on January 11th and was visible through the 15th. But after that is when the show really began. It brightened further and had grown a significant tail as it swung around the sun. Several observers managed to photograph it in broad daylight, which makes for a pretty unique photo. I had a try myself at seeing it with my unaided eyes by blocking the sun behind the eave of my home, but I wasn't successful in spotting it. It began to show up in the evening sky, sporting a nice tail in images, even from the Northern Hemisphere. 
By the 18th, it was going very strong for observers in the southern hemisphere, sporting a four-degree tail, and was clearly visible to the unaided eye. Hungarian astrophotographer Lionel Mazjet posted this series of images that clearly showed the coma, or head of the comet, disappear. The nucleus of the comet, the actual comet itself, had apparently disintegrated. I saw this short video and my jaw dropped. But from this event sprouted a growing tail, which became spectacular in the following days. I heard it referred to in the media as the headless comet. Yeah, less, and thank goodness it wasn't near Halloween. From a wide angle, the comet has this sharply pointed look like a fountain pen, reminiscent of old photographs of certain rare comets of the past. I found this example of Comet Lovejoy in 2011. This brings us up to today, February 1st. It's still an amazing comet and still visible to the unaided eye from the southern hemisphere. Unfortunately for those in the north, it's not going to be visible again. So what are your predictions for this comet in February? You know what? I'm not sure how long it's going to remain bright. I mean, it has to fade at some point. It's getting farther away from the sun for one thing, and presumably there's no source of gas or dust anymore, and the dust in the tail will slowly disperse. The comet that would not die. This is outside my experience. Normally, when I make predictions, they're for the coma of the comet. That's the bright round ball at the pointy end. My algorithm considers the size of the coma, how concentrated it is, and its integrated magnitude. But without a coma, I can't do that. So if you're in the southern hemisphere or even near the equator, keep watching and keep photographing. It's moving higher in the sky each evening after sunset. I have a feeling that, despite it having persisted for over a week, it may begin to fade quickly. Is it coming back again? I heard something about it being once in 160,000 years. The media always seems to need to find some way to claim a comet as special and rare. It's like their editors won't accept a story about a run-of-the-mill comet. I don't get it. All comets are special and rare, and everyone is different. Everyone has its own story. Why invent things? That's the opposite of good journalism, right? It's not like any of us will be here to see it in 160,000 years. So it might just as well never be coming back, right? And that number is really dubious anyhow. Suffice it to say that this comet may have passed through the inner solar system before in the distant past. That's the only story there. But as for the future, well, it's gone now. It appears that tail is just a fading ghost of a once great comet. It could give us a meteor shower in principle, but the orbit's not really right for that. So that's it then, gone for good. How's that for a rare event? Well, on behalf of myself, Les, and the Great Comet of 2025, it's goodbye. But we'll be back, right? Yeah, and I can't wait to see what next month brings. Happy Comet chasing everyone. <laughs>